So we had Tony with Adam Copeland, and he did a promo about how he respects Sting and Darby. And then Christian's music hits, and he comes out, and he talks about how Adam has neck problems and advised him to back down. Otherwise, he was going to break his neck, leave him in a wheelchair the rest of his life. True. He says, you know, I don't think this is sinking in. Luch Swords, Nick, go give him a preview of what's going to happen at the pay-per-view. So Edge lays out Nick and Luchasaurus, but then Christian hits the ring. He's a distraction. Luchasaurus hits the rabbit lariat. Nick hits the cutter. They go to to Concerto uh, Adam, but Sting's music hits. Him and Darby hit the ring. And, man, Darby's running wild. He's got no sling on, so I guess maybe he doesn't have a fractured shoulder. Darby's wrestling Saturday against against Lance Archer. Apparently he's all right. So uh, How is that possible? I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I mean, I saw that fall he took. And that was only like, you know, I don't know. It's a durable dude. So Edge speared Christian, grabbed the know. mic, said he's going to beat his ass. And so, yes, we have a six man official at full gear. Well, that was expected that they were going to end up with that six man. So, and, you know, and probably build to Edge and, uh, you know, or Adam Copeland and Christian. So then they had announced that Tony Khan had a big announcement. And he appears on screen and says, Wembley was one of the greatest shows anyone ever seen. It's November 1st. It's the beginning of the holiday season. Except my parents, who've had a Christmas tree up since July. And a great why, stocking why, stuffer. Why, why, why would that be? Well, some people really like Christmas. I'm sure Foley's had his up since uh, probably WrestleMania. Okay. So he says, Wembley tickets are going on sale December 1st, and you can sign up at Ticketmaster if you want to get a jump on things. But you can get you can get the pre-sale before then. Yes, that's the big announcement. Yeah, some people didn't like that as a big announcement. Well, um, you know, they've gone to the well. I know. The, the, you know, I thought it'd be something else, but uh, I didn't think the Drillistico signing would, would, would have qualified either. Although Drillistico, you know... Drillistico actually was, at one point, a pretty damn big star about three or four years ago. But, uh, you know, you know, it's, that wasn't going to be it either. And then we had uh, Tony Khan, or the Jericho and uh, Omega versus Daddy Magic and Cool Hand Ange with Don Callis on commentary. They're the Golden Jets. They are now 3-0. and Jericho hit the Judas effect on Parker. So this is one of those uh, pro wrestling things. It's not just AEW. It's every promotion. It's so stupid. If you get in the ring with a weapon, it is only disqualification if you actually hit the person. Angelo Parker gets in the ring with his baseball bat. He's got the bat in the ring. He swung this bat like he was playing in the World Series. And luckily, Jericho ducked or he'd be, you know, his head would be in Japan right now. But the ref didn't care. He didn't actually hit him. So then Jericho hit the Judas effect and got the pin. And then Don and the family start heading to the ring. And Don and Takesh to destroy Kenny. Or Don says, Takesh to destroy Kenny. Hobbs broke Jericho in half, but they're both back. Maybe we've got to take it up a notch. He wants a street fight in the uh, Dynamite in Ontario, California. And Jericho and Kenny accept. And they say, we got Kota Bushi there as well. And then Don says, well, that's cool. But you're still a man short. And so Jericho says, well, I saw Hobbs. And I knew I needed someone even bigger than him. And Don says, nobody is bigger than Will Hobbs. Well, out comes Paul White, who is, in fact, bigger than Will Hobbs. And so he we've was, got an eight-man coming up. I, I, heard, that, um, I heard that when um, Paul White was at, back in OVW just a couple weeks ago, and, you know, I think guest ring announcer or something like that, made a guest appearance, and I heard that his movement was, was not good. And, you know, he, he stood there. He, he was big, very crooked. Yeah, big braces on his knee. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's a big guy, and he's 51 years old, and he's had, you know, all kinds of knee problems um, and other problems. But, uh, you know, I mean, again, he's probably only has to come in for like a, you know, I mean, look, look who he's teaming with. He, he's probably only going to have to come in for, you know, short spurts and everything. But, uh, I mean, he did throw the one punch, but that was it. But he was not moving. And we had uh, the Bucks meeting with Kenny and Jericho. And Matt says, not to be overdramatic, but what was the point of the elite getting back together if none of us have each other's backs? And who let this prick Jericho into the locker room? Remember what this guy did to our father? I do. And he said, uh, 
And Jericho goes, you guys weren't good enough tonight. Don't yell at me. And Kenny said, Chris is the enemy of an enemy. And Matt said, listen, just Jericho is exactly like Don. He's going to screw you in the end. And they storm off. So clearly there's a, I think, a split coming here. Oh, yeah. Akar Rashid and Willow Nightingale, AEW women's title. Not a lot of heat early, but they worked hard. They had a lot of near falls. They kicked out of a lot of stuff. And they got the crowd into it. Um, Sheeta finally hit the spinning knee, got the pin, and then Tony Storm ran out to steal the thunder again. But Sheeta ran up, hit the running knee on the stage, chased her backstage. Lights go out. They come back on. Julia Hart's in the ring, staring at Willow. So she wants a handshake. Willow's not going to give it to her. So Sky Blue hits the ring. They tease that Sky is going to turn on Willow, but instead she allegedly blew blue mist at Julia, but she pretty much completely missed her. So apparently, uh, at this point at least, Sky is still a babyface with Willow. Mm-hmm. And the acclaim met with MJF. Well, you know, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, yes. The um, I guess that that in the, the the match in two weeks, you know, it's going to be with, with an eight man. I guess the fourth person is going to be Sammy Guevara. Is that who it's going to be? Most likely, unless he's not cleared, and then they'll probably have to get somebody else. Yeah. So uh, then we had the acclaim meeting with MJF and Casser at a trash bag, and he said, "You can team with us. All you have to do is scissor and wear what's in this bag." And MJF looked in the bag, and he's like, "Oh man, I'm out of here." So uh, he goes, I got I got one other group I can ask. And so he rounds the corner, and there is, Jer- is Jeff Jarrett's crew, and they're all laughing. And then Jeff looks at them, and then he sadly looks down at the trash bag. So then we had uh, Switchblade and the crew come down to the ring, and then the acclaimed music hits, and they come out, and they do the rap, and then MJF's music hits, and he comes out in pink MJF gear. And he's not super high on the idea. Caster wants a high five. MJF refuses to give it to him. So the whole story of the match is that MJF wants Jay White, and Jay White is avoiding MJF. He will not get in the ring with him. He runs from him. He wants nothing to do with him. They get the heat on Caster. He finally gives a hot tag to MJF. He's making his big comeback. The heels try 310 to Yuma. MJF avoids it. He hits the kangaroo kick. The place goes crazy. The guys bump outside. He's screaming at him, and he turns around right into the Blade Runner, and he is pinned. So after the match, Jay gets the belt. He's going to waffle him, and he goes to, uh, to, to hit the belt shot, and Caster shoves him out of the way and takes the bullet, And, man, you watch this bump that he took. His head bounced off the mat on this bump. It looked brutal. And then uh, the heels leave, and Caster, from his back, wants the scissor. MGF wasn't wanting to do it. So Daddy Ass gets in his face, and he screams at him. After all that Max Caster's done for you, you owe this guy. So MGF goes to the corner. They do the big scissor, gets the big pop, and the show goes off the air. So... Got a couple of weeks left before uh, full gear, but they're uh, they're selling that main event big. MJF and well, they Jay need, they White. Need to. They need to. Yep. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.